We're about to enter the world of a very creative artist whose art is as enchanting and colorful as his outlook on life. Let's travel to Northern Kentucky to visit Mike Maydak. I remember this dream I always have, and that all this time I've been waking up doing whatever I want during the day, pretty much painting, and uh, I was supposed to be in school, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in big trouble. Now I wake up and I'm like, wow, this is my life. This is pretty cool. I get to, you know, uh, sort of wake up and get my coffee and, and paint, and it, it's, I enjoy it. I don't, I don't think I could do the nine to five for sure. Um, so, and, and this is more like, the, you know, eight to eight. Uh, I went to uh, Northern Kentucky University. I really, I really just like telling stories. And um, so I tried to be a writer for a while while I went into uh, college. Uh, I was a journalism major for a little bit. My writing just wasn't very good, but I could draw. I started taking art classes and I uh, went and worked for the paper. Uh, and I did the cartoon strip there. And uh, I got it to a point where it was actually uh, nationally syndicated through the uh, a wire service that distributes it nationally. You get Dr. Seuss a lot, and uh, I'll take it, uh, because uh, he did pretty well for himself. Um, uh, Tim Burton movies, uh, people will reference some sort of Tim Burton movies, Edward Scissor's Hands or uh, Willy Wonka. So it's usually some Tim Burton movie. Everybody says whimsical. Oh, it's a whimsical, and I, I get that all it just wants to make me, makes me smile. When someone looks at my paintings, I mean, everybody does in general, they try to relate it to something they already know. And Dr. Seuss is probably most well known. Uh, you know, like my influence, I read Dr. Seuss, everybody did. But, you know, my influence aren't directly him, but you know, part of it, it is. You know, it is influenced by him. When I was doing comic strips, I was really influenced by the, some classic, sort of at the time, very popular American comic strip artist. There's a magazine called Heavy Metal. And uh, it's, it republishes uh, European stories that are usually in French or Italian. And there's one in particular, his name was Alfonso Asperi. And I looked at his artwork and I absolutely, absolutely hated it. Like, and it was like passion, like this is awful. And the fact that I'm, I'm realizing like, wow, I had this reaction to this, this work that was literally passionate, like hate, you know. And like, wait a minute, well, let's do, let's do this. And I started looking at his work, and it's like, I really, he was, it was a genius. It was incredibly awesome. And through him, through his artwork, I discovered that whole vein of influence uh, that's in a lot of European comics. What I say my artwork is is just me taking what I did with my comic book art and putting it on canvas. In today's culture, they don't, people don't know what to do with a comic book. It's they're cool, but it's like, what is this? Um, uh, but they know what to do with a painting. Uh, I have no problems with giving up a painting. It's only mine when I'm making it. Once I'm done with it, I, I'm ready to let it go. Once I sell that painting, that means I have to make another. And that's what my job is. You know, I get to make more paintings. A lot of my paintings, uh, more detailed paintings, are actual locations. So uh, what I do is photo reference of places, and um, I'll. Um, I'll put my twist on it. I'll do a sketch of it, uh, sort of come up with composition and uh, put it on canvas. And that usually takes maybe two or three weeks. Um, in my house series, uh, which I've done a lot of, they're inspired by the local row houses in Covington, sort of the brick row houses that are in these long lots. Uh, and it's just, they've morphed over time and to be uh, uh, their own little uh, thing. It's my brand, basically. The houses that are around here that you typically see have turned into my brand my, my signature painting. I got called out, someone tell me that's all I do is houses. And I'm like, I can more in houses. And I still do houses all the time because that's what people buy and that's what they sell. But I almost got complacent on like, this is what I was just doing all the time. And I have to, I have to break out occasionally um, and um, just do something different because I'm going to get stagnant. And I've been taking these tanks and uh, putting them in like really um, 
happy landscapes. It's a, there's a really cool juxtaposition with it because you could come up with a story where, you know, this gross invasion of a tank or like the tank's ready to retire. He had seen enough killing. He's ready for peaceful uh, surroundings. Um, and, you know, so whatever you want to pull out of it. When I started art school, I was, I hadn't done artwork. I started when I was 19 again. So everybody in art school is better than me. So I just worked really hard. I was like constantly improving my skills, like drawing all the time. And um, I think some people who have the, the natural gift for it or always had it, uh, never having that sense of insecurity about it is really unfortunate. People were seeing these uh, buildings and they wanted like their house or something they liked and as a uh, commission. Some things I would have never thought about painting, I painted because I've uh, been hired to. Because normally I just paint on my own, uh, my own aspirations, but that extra pressure you get when it's pretty much the painting is already paid for and you have to you have to produce in a certain amount of time. That extra pressure always has always led to like a, a really cool painting. Anybody buying your work, supporting your work, or just liking your work is allowing you to keep on doing what you want to do. Uh, that ten dollars that someone depends on a paper print, uh, that's just as important as you know that thousand dollar painting you sell because uh, they're supporting you. They're saying, yes, we like what you're doing, keep on doing it. Uh, yet you have permission. I'm providing them with a painting, but then again, they're providing me with the means to keep on doing what I'm doing. What I'm saying is, if you like someone's artwork, buy it because uh, that's just the perfect way to, uh, you know, tell them to keep on doing what they're doing.